In the best of the rest of the news, over the weekend, journalists from nine of the most influential media outlets in the country, including the New York Times, the Washington Post, and Politico, got inside access to an event hosted by the Koch brothers out in California. The event was held at the swanky St. Regis Monarch Bay Resort, and it was a chance for the Kochs to meet one-on-one -on -one with powerful donors, as well as a few of the Republican candidates for president. For those journalists who got access to the event, it was a perfect chance to report on the brave new world of big money politics created by the Supreme Court Citizens United decision. The only problem was they weren't, they being the, the news media, were not allowed to name any of the event's donors by name. They could report on the event itself all they wanted, they just couldn't report on who was actually there. The New York Times, the Washington Post, Politico, and the rest of them all happily complied with the Koch brothers' orders, although not everyone did. Joining me now for more on this is Lauren Windsor, contributor to the Huffington Post and host and executive producer of The Undercurrent. Lauren, welcome. Thanks for having me, Tom. Great to have you with us. So uh, tell us, first of all, you were there? I was, yes, in so, Dana Point at the St. Regis. Pardon? In Dana Point at the St. Regis. Didn't, didn't, in order to be there, didn't you have to sign some sort of a document to the Cokes saying, you know, we promise that we won't? Uh, well, Think Progress actually came out with, uh, they obtained a copy of the requirements, and it was a fairly lengthy document, right. but chief among them not identifying any of the, the donors, one, without the donor's permission, but two, without the network's permission. So they had to do the everything. Donor networking. Yeah, they had to do everything through Freedom Partners before wow. publishing. Isn't, isn't that just a, a fundamental violation of journalistic principles, or, or are there some cases where getting the story is so important that you'll operate within constraints. I mean, I, I and think that those it, constraints have been reported. Uh, they should have and, and all of the, uh, to my knowledge, all of the uh, news organizations that, you know, accepted those restraints reported on them. Some um, reported more uh, fully than others, right. um, but, you know, it, it's a devil's bargain because what these journalists really did was give the network a veneer of transparency that they wouldn't otherwise have had. Yeah. We have a, a picture of you working out with one of the Koch brothers. Do I have that? <laughs> yeah. Here, here, um, yeah. yeah. So, so how did you get in there, and, and what are you doing now with the information that you gained from being there? Um, well, in, in terms of how I get into places, I'd rather not divulge you know, uh, okay. trade secrets. That's but um, I was there. Uh, the information that I gathered was specifically to uh, do what the mainstream media won't do, is to name these Koch donors. And so some of the pictures that you're seeing, uh, the one of uh, David Koch looking angrily at my uh, photographer, <laughs> mm. I'm sure he's not very happy with it right now, but we've taken pictures like extensively of the golf course and the entrance to the hotel. Right. And I have 2,000 pictures wow. to mine for, for information about the donors to this network. And I think it's vital to American democracy that we know who is paying off these politicians. I saw on your Twitter feed, I think it was, yesterday, a picture of a guy driving out of there in a fancy car, flipping you the bird, um, and you were asking, does anybody know who this is? Did you ever find out who it was? We didn't, and really, um, that was less of the point uh, than just to say, we are looking into this, right. and you know, we are not going to drop the ball on identifying these donors. So who do we know so far was there? Well, I can tell you that John Schnatter, the founder of Papa John's Pizza, was there, as well as Fred Klipsch of the, uh, you know, audio company, Klipsch Audio. So why would, why would wealthy people who are, well, I shouldn't characterize it because I, I may answer my own question. Why do these people not want us to know who they are and what they're up to? Well. You know, a lot of the people that donate this money have consumer businesses, and so they're afraid that, you know, the American public is going to wake up and see, you know, I can abide by free market principles too and vote with my pocketbook and decide not to buy these products. And I urge, you know, every everyone that has a problem with the corrosive effect of money in politics to not ever again order a Papa John's pizza. Because... because because that money is that money is going funding to... climate change. Would you like to order a pizza with a side of climate change? Because right. I know that climate change for me, top two issues: money and politics, and climate change. Yeah. And you know. And you can't disentangle them really right now in the United States. You can't. So so uh, where? Uh, tell us about your show on the undercurrent, and where is where are you taking this? 
So with the undercurrent, um, actually on September 17th, which is the birthday of Occupy and um, also the anniversary of my show, it'll be three years, um, I, I really got started as an occupier. I got addicted to going to protests, covering them, uh, holding politicians accountable. And so I started going around the country doing it. And I found that it was really easy to cover political events because no one's on the ground doing it. Mm. You just show up with a camera and stick a microphone in somebody's face and say, hey, I want to know why you're doing this. Or, you know, I became a citizen journalist and then, you know, it became a profession for me. You know, I had been uh, a fashion designer. So we're talking about something that for me, was more than a calling. I felt like it was an obligation. Yeah, yeah. And and you expect over the next few weeks uh, to identify these pictures and start publicizing the names of these Coke donors. Uh, that's our intent. And um, you, you know, a lot of these donors will be very hard to identify, especially you know in cars or you know with caps on their head or you know intentionally looking the other way. But. You know, even if we only get a handful of people out of this, yeah. um, this so reminds this me of, scrutiny of, of you know will change things. Back in the '60s, when Bobby Kennedy was going after the mafia, and these guys would come in, you know, covering. It's, it's it's amazing. Lauren Windsor, you're doing great work. Thank you so much. This is so nice to meet you. Thanks for dropping by.